So many years ago, uh, back in the 1950s, as a matter of fact, there was a, a, a rather famous ensemble of actors uh, who worked on several well-known projects together. Now, one of them secretly had been seeing a psychologist for nearly two decades to combat a, a, a series of uh, mental and emotional issues like depression and, and, and paranoia. But she kept it a secret because she didn't want to be seen by the others as a, a, a mental patient or as someone who didn't have their act together when the cameras were turned off. The stigma of getting psychological help was too great, and it probably added to her problems. Many years later, uh, after uh, several of this actress's uh, uh, colleagues had, had already found out about her need to seek help, uh, one of them uh, admitted that the entire cast could have benefited from a psychologist and that she was probably the only one who did have her act together just because she decided to seek help. Now, that was more than 50 years ago. Today, though, the stigma still seems to be there. The idea that getting psychological help of any kind is socially unacceptable and it's probably keeping millions of people from getting the help that they need. Why is it acceptable for people to hire trainers for the body but not for, say, the mind? Dr. Stephen C. Walker is with us on the Boomer's Lifeline to talk about this. Dr. Walker is a nationally known mental health therapist. He's a consumer advocate and a licensed clinical psychologist. Dr. Walker, hey, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us for just a little bit here. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. You bet. So now we've, we've come a long way socially over the past 30, 50, 100 years where segments of society that used to be swept under the rug and kept hidden are really now accepted and, and, and even embraced. Why do you suppose that we're still stuck in the 1950s when it comes to getting some help with, with our mental health? Well, I think, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that, but I think, you know, your intro kind of hit on one of the key points is that uh, the example you use of the, the lady who was in therapy for two decades, you know, mm -hmm. that's part of the problem is there's this perception that when you get into therapy or work with a psychologist, it's going to take you two decades to work through a lot of your issues. And that is kind of the old school way of looking at it. Most of the, the, the psychologists that I know, myself included in that, are kind of a new breed of psychologists who are looking at delivering mental health services to to our clients and patients as a very customer service oriented kind of, of, of um, uh, arrangement where we're constantly checking in with them. We want them to make progress. We're, we're making ourselves more available through social media, through texting, through Facebook, so that they can access us on a more regular basis. But I think the main stigma is people have this idea that they're the only one that has issues. They're the only one that struggles with, with uh, insecurity or depression or self-doubt or drinking problems or some sort of a negative affect that they're experiencing and they genuinely believe that if people knew this they wouldn't like them they wouldn't accept them but the reality of it is everyone has issues and I've been on several shows and I always ask the host name me one person you know who doesn't have issues right that's excellent and you know Dr. Walker I have to say that um, you know I, I probably was guilty of that same you know, uh, carrying that stigma on. Uh, 25 years ago when I was still in college, I actually got a job working in mental health and it completely shed light for me on, you know, something that really is, is not something to be stigmatized. Um, but short of going out and actually working with people or in that community, uh, how can we combat this, uh, this, this stigma that just seems to persist? Sure. Well, hi, Diane. Thanks for having me on. And what I'll say to that is, you know, everyone has to do the work themselves. Everyone has to, anyone listening to this show has to accept the fact that I'm struggling with something. It's impeding my ability to be happy. It's, impe it's impeding my ability for my relationship to grow. And they have to accept the fact that they're not the only one doing it. I mean, they, they did a study of the groundwater systems. This is on the AP's website. They did a study of the groundwater systems of 15 municipalities around the country. Guess what they found in it? Unprocessed antidepressants, oh. anti-anxiety medications, acetaminophen, painkillers. This stuff is getting into our groundwater because it's overly prescribed. People are, are conditioned. The, the, I mean, I hate to sound conspiratorial, but the pharmaceutical companies have conditioned people into believing that mental health is treated the same way heart disease would be treated by taking a pill. There is a raging debate about whether or not mental health is a biologically organic-based brain anomaly. For some people, sure, schizophrenia 
organic brain anomalies, closed head traumas, absolutely. But that's a small percentage of the people who struggle with these things in, their, in themselves that they're not dealing with. So to combat the stigma, everyone out there needs to accept the fact it's okay that I'm insecure, it's okay that I have painful childhood memories, but I've got to deal with them. Well, and it's funny because we, we, you know, people brag about the- about their, their, their personal trainer. You know, I saw my per- three times this week, and we're working on this. Or my nutritionist, you know, I'm working on doing this. But, but, but they don't want to talk about any other uh, uh, psychological problems that they're having, much less even talk about getting help for it. Now, it's hard for people to self-diagnose psychological problems. Just talk for just a moment about some of the dangers of choosing not to seek help if you actually do need it. Uh, you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, The problem is, to be honest with you, is there's way too much self-diagnosing. There's way too many people out there who are quote-unquote experts in mental health or behavioral experts, and people are taking advice from people who aren't trained in the field. I mean, you've got people putting themselves out there as, oh, I can help you find your voice. I can help you find your purpose. I can help you listen to me, listen to me. Are any of these people uh, carrying a client load? Have any of these people been trained? Are are they licensed in psychology? Have they gone through any kind of a training program that puts them in a position to tell somebody else what their problem is or I can help them? I'm I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying that, oh, psychologists are the answer to everything. But the reality of the situation is there are way too many people out in the media who are making millions of dollars a year who have never seen a single client. Mm. They have never sat and carried a caseload. They have no idea how to work with people and help them make That's significant we, changes. We, we've seen that with, with, with financial people, too, who have never yeah. sat across oh, yeah. a desk from somebody and actually worked with somebody that have only read about it. They've sat at a desk. Uh, if somebody wants some more information on this, we're out of time. Uh, what's the website that they can go to, Dr. Walker? The easiest one that it's linked to my website is everyonehasissues.com. <laughs> Everyone, boy, now that is perfect right there. <laughs> Everyoneissues.com. Dr. Stephen Walker, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate right. you having me on. All right, take care. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be near your breaking point, you know. Right. You can just need help. Uh, we're out of time. I, I have more I can say on this, but we are out of time. If you need the Brain Trust, you go to boomersbraintrust.com. That's the website for Dinah Smith. Dinah? and everyone behind the scenes. I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.